introduction to using Final Cut Pro on the Mac um, at Brooks. First of all, we need to transfer any files we're using, video files, audio files, onto the student data disk here, onto the hard disk on the computer. Double click on student data, that will open it up. And then go up to the little cogwheel at the top here and click New Folder. This will give you something which says Untitled Folder down here and type your name in here. And Okay, put your first name and your second name, and it's always quite helpful to put the year in as well. Double click on the folder icon to open that up. And then, generally what we do these days is plug in a, hard, a memory stick, flash drive, hard disk, a card out of a camera, or in this case, we're plugging in one of the little flip video cameras. When you plug that into the USB on the back of the machine, you will see over here, its icon will appear up here. Okay, it's like a little white thing. Double click on that. You then need to burrow down through the files. In this case, we click DCIM, 100 video. Inside there are the videos. If you want to preview them, click this button up here, which eventually will give you a nice preview at the top. And then all you do is drag the files that you want into your folder. Okay, and just basically leave it to do that before opening up Final Cut Pro. Once everything is transferred, remember to eject safely the camera or memory stick before going any further, before opening up Final Cut Pro. And we drag and drop that into the bin down there. And we can close that down quite happily. Okay, I'm now going to open up Final Cut Pro. You should find it down on the dock at the bottom here, or if necessary, click on launch pad and scroll across until you see the Final Cut Pro icon. Use the one with the rainbow thing on it, not the old version. Click once on that and be a little bit patient while it opens up. You can see on the Mac, we've got its icon bouncing up and down here. Okay, once Final Cut Pro has opened, first thing we need to do, and these steps are very important, is click up here in Libraries and you should see a library with the semester number you are in and the year you are in. For example, here we have semester 1, 2014. Just click on there to select that library. If you can't see this library, then ask for technical help from your lovely technical specialist. Having selected semester 1 library, we go to File, we go to New, and we go to Event. This is very important. This sets this up for you. It's your own little space on this particular machine on this particular version of Final Cut Pro for everything to be in. Okay, don't save it in someone else's work, they might well delete your stuff. Under event name, again, enter your name. The library here should say, as we said, the semester and the year, semester 1, 2014, that's correct. And we're going to create a new project. This is where our editing is going to happen. Just click use custom settings here. We should see it is set on video properties set based on first clip. Audio used default settings. OK. And click OK on that button there. And you'll see what happens now over here on the left hand side in the library. We've now got a little box down here start and events is where you save everything called AD Poorly. There's also in here a project. This is where the video is going to be edited. It's worth clicking on that untitled project at this point and calling that something that's a bit relevant to what you're doing.
Okay, we now need to bring in the clips that we imported in the previous stage. Make sure you have transferred everything into your folder on student work before doing this. If we go up to File and Import and Media, this will open up the Import Media box. Now, if you remember correctly, we need to click over on Student Data over here, not any of the other files. You then need to go and look for your folder, your name on, in this case we're looking for Ethan Pawley. You can, at this point, if you want to import everything, just click Import Selected Now, that will import everything in your folder. If you want to see what the clips are, you can click here and you can see we're getting a preview of what the clips look like up here. I'm going to bring the whole folder in, so I click on AD Pawley, folder name, click Import Selected, and by default, and the safest option is to have files copy to library selected, that backs up everything into a separate folder on here, and leave all the other boxes unticked at this point, and click Import. Okay, that then brings your clips up into the events window. If they're all looking rather long like they are at the moment here, so just a representation of them in time, we can click this little slider here to get them into sort of more manageable lengths. These clips are a lot shorter. Okay, let's quickly do some very simple editing. Here I want to put a very quick sequence together. These are quite long, these clips. You can see in the browser I can drag through and have a look at them. I can click on it at any point, click the play button in the browser and watch it through. Okay, these clips are quite long. I want to make a pacey edit, so I only want to select bits of these clips. Now if I drag this in the clip I want, if I drag one end, I can choose where it's going to start, and this bit where the light fades down, I want to go just before there, click on the other end, and you can see there's a yellow box goes across here, there are numbers in the middle which tell me how many seconds it's going to be, that's going to be 13 seconds, this has got a bit small to pick up, let's magnify my view down here a little bit, this makes it a bit easier to see what I'm doing. If I click in the middle of the clip, I get a hand icon and I drag and drop that down onto the timeline. And that's my first clip in there. See, I can drag the edit bar along. There's a timer up here, which tells me it's 13 seconds long. I then go and choose the next clip I want to put in. I'll do a bit of this cloud close up cloud sequence. Find a relatively interesting bit of that. Out there, that's where I want it to start. Click the yellow bar at the other end and drop that in down to the timeline. If I want to play that through, I drag the edit bar back to the beginning, I press play, and it will play through in real time, as you can see down here. Okay, I like fast editing, this is a bit boring. Okay. Boom, there we are in our close-up of the sky. Now, if I want to change the point where this edit happens, down here, and through, I want less of this clip, so I'd click from the beginning and I take some time off there. I might well want to take off some of this one, so make this one a little bit shorter. You can see there are numbers at the top tell me how long it is. It's now 10 seconds long. My whole film at the moment is 15 seconds. Just to repeat very quickly how we select part of a clip, if we want some of this shot of a different telly in a different place, again, click on it, select the bit that I want, the bit which starts in shade and goes into light. Just select a little bit of that. Okay. Click in the middle to get the hand icon, drag that down to there. 
just the length a little bit here by eye. Just say, okay, right, all of these about 10 seconds long. Then we want a little bit of the close up shot to go with that. Again, you just go through and select where you want it to begin. There, drag that down, drag that down onto the timeline, like so. So now we've got a basic sequence. You can drag through, see how it's going to change. Once you are happy with your sequence, we want to save this. So we go up to File, up to the top here, we go to Share and we go to Master File Default. This will export it out of here as QuickTime Movie. Demo Movie tells me how big it's going to be. I click Next. It asks me where I want to save it. By default, it's going in here. I want to save it into Student Data, into my folder, and click Save. And that will then do that in the background. Okay, now at this point just sit and wait. You can see down here the background task viewer is clicking around, saying it's 10% through. You click on that, you can see it's sharing and it's 15% done. Basically, we now need to just leave that and let it export. Okay, the finished movie will then open up in QuickTime Player and we can then play it through.